Welcome to the program, Harlan Blaine Kaitwayat. Welcome to the show. Hey, good to be here. Thanks for having me. Well, thanks for coming on. We're really happy to have a healthy scratch in the last place club in the no show on the program. <laughs> oh, man. So, Shorzy came out. You know, of course, it's a, a spinoff from Letterkenny. So, already, I know there, a fan base was out there rapidly waiting for it. There was a hockey fan base out there rapidly waiting for it. And it was released on the masses with a lot of expectations and it delivered across the board. How does it feel to be part of a hit show? Uh, you know, to be honest, it, it's like unreal to me. Um, like I'm barely new to the acting industry myself. And like, yeah. of yeah. course I'd be a part of that fan base. Like, Oh, I'm part of this group, like being a fan of this number one show and now being on the other side of it. It's just like, I don't, is this real? Like someone pinch me. <laughs> <laughs> And it's really interesting as well, because the first thing you ever saw of Letterkenny was like a, a super cut of uh, Shorzy, right? Yeah. Um, the best of Shorzy compilation on YouTube. That's, uh, that's what my uncle got me watching first. And I was like, this is great. But it didn't really like get me wanting to watch it right away. And then it was the character of Tannis in Letterkenny when she said, right. Skoden, Studis. I was like, okay, I'm sold. Let's watch Letterkenny. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. And you end up on a show where... Your best friends with Shorzy and one of the producers is Tannis. So yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. That's awesome, man. Yeah, no, it, it, the show is amazing. You're awesome on the show, but I, I got to, you know, like, coming into the show, you know, as you already mentioned, like, you, you know, you weren't part of uh, Letter Kenny originally, right? Like this is a new character being brought in. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah, and so be, being involved in that, like now there are, there are a lot of people involved in the show that are, holdovers from letter Kenny, especially behind the scenes for yourself coming in, you know, like as an actor and knowing that there's such a, an existing fan base and, and a, and a universe around this character. What was that like for you uh, coming in as an actor? Um, it was great. You know, um, like behind the scenes, like when I'd be like me and Jared would be going over our lines or whatever, we'd be having like a conversation. He'd just like say, Oh, this guy was in like, he worked also with, like letter Kenny and like I'd introduce myself to them. And I was like, yeah, it was really I guess, trippy to say, um, to be working not just with the uh, Jared Kiso and like um, Jacob Tierney, because like you see that he plays a character, he plays um, Red Benny Benoit. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. And, like, Fantastic francophone announcer. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Now, the one thing that, you know, it's a comedy and there's a lot of great characters on the show, but what really got me is that when it comes down to, you know, the way that indigenous people are represented, when it comes to the way the hockey's represented, when it comes to the way that Sudbury's represented, it's very authentic and realistic. The only thing in the show that I did not buy is nobody in their right mind would ever cheat on Lorenz LaBeouf. That would never happen. She is a goddess. They would, nobody would ever cheat on her, but everything else, very authentic. So <laughs> being involved in the show and looking at that, like, the authenticity was put into it. I'm guessing everybody really focused on making sure that they were giving off an authentic product. Yeah. Like, um, when we'd be at the hotel, like we'd, um, if there was a bunch of us in the next scene together, uh, we'd all just get the kick. We'd all get together in like someone's hotel room and we just rehearse it. Like we'd probably spend like an hour, maybe more than that. And we like get the scene done, not only to like provide for Jared and Jacob, but like just for us to get a sense of each other's like vibes, you know, like, all right, this is, when we actually shoot this on the day, it's going to be easy because we're already so connected. Yeah. Like, so I, for yourself, were you like, I'm not, I'm not sure. Like, do you know how to skate? Do you know how to play hockey at all? Or like, cause, or were, um, you, happy, were you happy? Cause you don't, cause we don't see. <laughs> you yeah. Do you those yeah. Right. <laughs> you, just, you just see the Jersey behind me at the episode yeah. one there. <laughs> But I can skate. Yes, I can yeah. skate. Like okay. one thing I can't do is like I can hold a puck and skate. or hold a puck, hold a stick and skate. Like you know, do the put back and forth or whatever. But when it comes to like actually playing hockey, you know, count me out. <laughs> yeah, put me on the bench. <laughs> was that was like, that? I can't play hockey, but I can skate. Yes. Right. Okay. Yes, yeah, so I was. Was it was that something that was always part of the character? Or was that something after they decided that you're going to be part of the show that maybe will make you the healthy scratch? Or how did that all work out? I was just curious. Um, I I think they wanted to throw me on the ice first because you know when they like message or not message when they email me like hey can we get to like your measurements 
And like, also if you have your own hockey equipment, can you bring it? And I was like, Oh, I don't. So like, if anything, can you guys provide? And uh, like, there's even talks I remember like about a stunt double coming in for me, just in case like saying when had to jump on the ice. Right. And, wow. uh, yeah, that's it. And then um, when I got there, I just, they said, Nope, he's, he's chilling. He's just gonna be the healthy scratch on him. Or I don't know how the saying goes. <laughs> Healthy scratch in the last place club in the no show. There you go. There we go. <laughs> so I'm just go well, you can tell me what the no show stands for because I always forget that part. Northern Ontario Senior Hockey Organization. There we oh. go. There you go. Yeah. Smoking like a pro right there. Yeah. <laughs> now, in the in the show, of course, Shorzy has the mission of like making sure this team never loses again. Mm-hmm. And Sanguinette is, you know, his best buddy who's trying to help him with that. But Shorzy is kind of like one of those characters that his mission changes, but he remains the same. Whereas Sanguinette goes on a real journey of character. He starts out as, you know, just like the guy, just kind of the booster on the team to becoming the coach and actually, you know, getting some, you know, forcefulness and like leading the team, becoming a leader. What was it like getting to play that story arc? And also what was it like to play with, uh, with Jared and creating that bond, that friendship? Um, it was really great because, like, in the audition process, um, the first audition, I didn't get, like, any notes. I just I just auditioned for what I what I was um, presented with, right? And then the next audition, I actually met with Jared Kiso and Jacob Tierney over Zoom. And uh, they were saying, like, they loved it. Um, we just have a few notes for you to, like, see, if, like, we can, like, get you to do this and see how it works out. Sorry. And um, one of the notes was um, at the very beginning saying when at is shy and reserved so like kind of to himself and like um always sound like someone to be like stepped over right mm. and um yeah and then like throughout the process of it um before um jared and i would shoot our scenes together we just always like we would talk like we would just chit chat we wouldn't like talk all professional stuff yeah um, he left that open it's like i was welcome with arms wide open on the set and it just worked out because it made me more comfortable with like all right i see that saying when it has to go from shine reserved to like yelling at these senior hockey or <laughs> players you know yeah <laughs> yeah i know it, it like andrew said like it, it's a great arc for your character and 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 it, it's such a great payoff by the end where we see how he's like from that first opening scene where you know it's just my guy right my guy like all the time and then you're like you know you're you're, you're in total control and you know you you've essentially got the entire plan for what happens in that game you know, like it's all, it's, it all comes to you. Like it was a great moment. I was, as I was watching, I was like, this is, this is awesome for you to come through this whole entire arc in just six episodes. Right. Like six episodes. Like um, it's not even like, cause it's about Shorzy. And I feel like right behind Shorzy, it's a development for saying when it as well. Like um, you're right. There is a great character arc there. And it was like, I don't, it, it was challenging to like do it. Like, because me and myself personally, I am like kind of like saying when it in episode one and two shine reserved. So like having to like step out of that, it was actually also me having to step out and like really yell at these older fellas. So, so is, would you say that's something you maybe you've taken away from from the character? You know, like for yourself. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah I, saying when it really helped me also just be out there, like even just responding to fans when they DM me on Instagram or anything. Like I, I love it. And they agree with like they say the same things as well. How many DMs do you get where it's like, give your balls a tug, Sanguinette? <laughs> um a lot. <laughs> it's just I wish Sanguinette had something to say back to Shorzy so I can like yeah. say it back to the fans, but I just have to like send like I don't know, like a sad face or like the plain face or something, you know, because that's what that's what saying what it does whenever she yeah. says that to him. <laughs> oh my god! Now, of course, um, it just got released. the The series just got released on Hulu last Friday, mm-hmm. and uh, you were doing press for the Hulu release with with Jacob Tierney. And Jacob was just needling you on every interview. He was just really getting your goat. Was that like was that playfulness? Uh, his kind of approach to directing you on set. Oh yeah, it really was even like, cause like our relationship in person is like just the best. Like, cause you know, Jacob Tierney he plays Glenn in Letterkenny and Glenn yeah. is my favorite character. So like, <laughs> like, no, it was, it was all like fun and games. Cause like in person too, like I would just be walking by him. He'd be like addressing like a crew or whatever. And I just like lightly just touch his shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> and then he'd like come back to me like five minutes later, just do the same and like walk away or something. I don't know. 
<laughs> it is all play. It's all love. It's all love. And I feel the love too. <laughs> That's awesome, man. That's yeah, no, that's something that we've uh, we've always heard about uh, about Leonard Kenny, you know, and I'm not surprised that it kind of carries over now into Shorzy, like that this 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 group of people, like I was mentioning earlier, like behind the scenes, because they're all like this core group. It just seems like it's very much like a very large family, and this they just welcome everybody in. Everybody we've talked to from from the various shows have always said the same thing, even when they're new. They're get welcomed in and there's no like there's no kind of like us and them and, you know, and you're new or hazing or anything like that. It's just like, come on and enjoy the party. It was exactly like I said before, it was like welcome with open arms. Like, of course, when we first like meet each other, it's like, hey, um, I'm Harlan Kite. Like, nice, like, pleasure to meet you. And like five minutes in Kabul, we're just like we're hanging out. We're just chilling out. And that's what just made it so like not easy. Well, easy. Yeah. Easy to like work with everybody is because of that yeah yeah no and yeah it seems like you guys are a well-knit group and i know even on the the press tours you guys have been a well-knit group as well you of course did the the crave promo run with with tasia tell us and we had mm -hmm. her on the show last week and uh, she talked about the uh the bonding over the canadian tuxedo and how you brought a Canadian tuxedo and that led her and the entire press team to dress in Canadian tuxedos as well. And that you guys were a gang. What was that, what was that experience for you like? Oh, it, is, it honestly came out of the blue. Like, um, uh, Tasia texted me the night before our first day of press tour. Yeah. And she's like, what are you wearing? I was like, oh, well, I was thinking about just like rocking a Canadian tuxedo on day one. And it's what everyone saw. And then she was like, like, oh my God, like, no, like I need to go and get one the next day. So like, wait for it, like save it for the last day. I was like, okay, well I got a second suit anyway. It's not a suit, but like I wore a cardigan that first day now. Yeah. And so like we did that. And then um, at the end of the first press tour, press day, she just started telling everybody, it's like, hey, denim on denim tomorrow, white tees. And yeah, sure enough, next day we show up, there's six of us or seven of us. There's seven of us rocking the same suit. We're just, like walking through the Bell Media building just looking boss and everything <laughs> denim gang <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's awesome that's really we got an email in from george l um he gives a review of the uh the show we're going to be reviewing later pistol but we f we'll save that for then but he actually ends off his email by saying is this the harlan of ctv morning live yep yep i forget like most of the interviews i did there was like oh uh, like I want to say between 10 to 15 the first day and about like five to eight the second day. So yeah, I remember CTV live was the very first one we did that morning. So yeah, that's, it's me. <laughs> yeah. And that whole, the whole whirlwind of going through all these different like stages and everything at the, at Bell Media for all these interviews, like this was your first time doing like a real like press junket, correct? Yep. Very first time ever. And I'm glad I was paired with Cassia because she just, when I was like losing it and like stuttering, she would just come in and like clear the air. And then like, she was great. She was like the rock that held me down as I was always trying to just float to the heavens. <laughs> <laughs> good grounding. That's good. That's good. Yeah. Oh man. Right. Yeah. So, so with, with the, uh, with the show, it, it kind of ends, um, you know, it has a nice conclusion. Like I mentioned, like you've got a really great arc, but the show itself ends on both a downer and a happy happy time yeah bittersweet yeah and you know it totally leaves that door wide open for for season two you know mm -hmm. as to wh what that story would be like um is there uh ha have uh because i haven't seen it yet if it's been confirmed or not for season two but is there anything you could tell us about what you would think would happen um i haven't heard anything myself yet too but i really hope there is because you know i feel like there's still much more to um, the relationship between shorzy and sanguinette that we can build on and even now like hinting at saying Wynette and uh Z or not Z one uh me one <laughs> yeah yeah me one yeah like that too and like yeah I feel like there's a lot more story to tell like not just with my character and Shorzy but like all of us so I'm really hoping that boom we're back season two's out next year or the year after or whatever you know yeah, I hope so yeah. too. Yeah, I actually, I'm very interested to see what happens between Sanguinette and Miguan. Definitely. Uh, we got an email in from Joan P who writes, Hey geeks, a fave listener here. Love Harlan. Very talented young man. So Joan is a fan. Thank nice. you so much. I appreciate it. <laughs> oh, man. So aside from, of course, you know, you're a singer, like a musician, 
you're an actor, but uh, you've also started to get into some writing and you've put together a feature length uh, script exploring colonialism through the, the, the lens of three childhood friends battling a mythic beast. Tell us a little bit about that. Okay, well, without like spoiling too much or giving away too much, um, I actually joined the team for that like just three years ago. And I guess it's been like an almost 10 year in the making kind of story, right? Mm. And I, um, I help with telling the indigenous side of it. There's a character, an indigenous boy. And um, I just, yeah, I jumped in and I'm giving like all the information and help that I can. But realistically, it always like stems to me, like going out, reach, like reaching out to them the elders are like my mom and them here like on my reserve right like mm -hmm. hey so like in this time like this this trying to get some pointers and um yeah that's that pretty much the um, what you just said there is like what the story is going to be based on and behind the scenes I actually wrote one of our we have a soundtrack to like this character we have she's like a contortionist kind of thing okay and so I wrote the song for that and there's like a few poems throughout the script too that I also wrote for the for the for the script Nice. That's awesome. Yeah. Okay. Hey, you were mentioning your your family, like uh, when when they uh, have they had a chance to see Shorzy yet and your performance in it. Um. Yeah. I think uh, definitely my brother. He's seen it. Um. Right from the get go with me. Um. I told my mom to not watch the cold opening to episode six for obvious reasons. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's a flashback. Your mom doesn't want to see. Definitely. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Like I was at home today. My brother had to like. My mom was like, "Clinton, um, like, like come skip it for me." Like Harlan said to not watch the cold opening, and I'm not going to. And the, his mom was like, "Mom, three minutes and twenty seconds. That's where you want to get to, and then the episode starts. You don't have to see the the squeezer off the side of a party island with Sega Beach." <laughs> <'Cause> if you're <laughs> gonna get a squeezer off the side of a off the side of a boat, Wasaga Beach is where you want to get it, definitely. That's the. I've heard. I've heard many stories. So it's a good place to get a squeezer. <laughs> definitely. Oh my god. But yeah. So I, I was just you know like with with that though like you you so it's cool that your family's seen it. Uh, you know like but that with them and and you know uh, and, and you know and friends and other family members ha have you had a good response to uh, your character's uh, position throughout this? You know and even and even the other characters that are, you know have. Uh, uh, a First Nations background was it like? Has everybody been pretty g happy about the way the show is portraying everything? One hundred percent. Like it's not even just like them um, saying like I did a good job at saying Lynette. It's just the fact that they're seeing someone from their reserve who walks like the same roads as them, like goes to the same stores as them, like on the screen, and like and also hockey is a like the biggest sport in my community right now. And actually, one of the gyms, I think it's a uh, gym free. I don't know. Um, <laughs> He's actually from the um, reserve just 30 minutes from mine. And he actually played on the same um, league here from my reserve. So, like, it was cool to have, like, two cast members from Shorzy, like, at the arena. Every Like, obviously, I wouldn't be on the bench with them. I'd be in the bleachers with everyone else. Yeah. <laughs> right. But it's, it's a really big deal. And it's, like, awesome to, like, have those interactions like that now. That's awesome. Definitely, man. That's great. Yeah, the representation is fantastic. And, oh, yeah. uh, of course, the... Um, a lot of uh, strong indigenous women on the show as well, oh, which again, yeah. much like tough natives, strong indigenous is redundant. Uh, it's just <laughs> an automatic given. Uh, man, really enjoyed the show. I did not expect to watch the last episode of Shorzy and almost find myself crying. That was what really surprised Same. me. Same. That's, yeah, so <laughs> I wanna thank you for yeah. your work on the show, man, and I really look forward to more and Judging on the reactions, I'm thinking you guys will be getting a second season. Oh, yeah. Um, I think it's um, number one in Crave in Canada right now. Sure yeah. yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> That's awesome, man. Well, you have yourself a great night, and thanks for coming on the show. Awesome. Thank you so much for having me. This is fun. It didn't even feel like an interview. It felt like we were just hanging out, you know? <laughs> That's what we go for here. That's what we go exactly. for here. That's what if I you like. walk away going, hey, this felt like an interview, we haven't done our job. Mm, yeah. So. That's Thank that's you what very I much appreciate about you. Wow. <laughs> oh, that's yeah. what you appreciate about me, eh? Yeah. That's... <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. You have yourself a great night. Thank you. You too.